Today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online is brought to you by Audible. Visit audiblepodcast.com slash realghost for a free audiobook download of your choice. Audible has over 150,000 titles to choose from, every genre, including ghosts, paranormal, supernatural, horror. Audible has you covered. Audiblepodcast.com slash realghost. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Today, would you be able to make an agreement with a ghost if it meant you could no longer use part of your home? A night custodian at a high school finds that he may not be working in an empty school after all. Could there be lingering effects from a traumatic birth that allows one listener to see things from the other side? And after a sister dies too young, a family begins to see light uh, 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 anomalies. Anomalies. Anomalies in their home. It's one of those words that I know, I see it, and I go, my mouth is not going to get this word out. (laughs) Anomalies. You just had the wrong emphasis on the syllables, that's all. That's all it is. Yeah, (laughs) I do that quite often. Those stories, your calls, and more tonight on Real Ghost Stories Online. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again. Hi. And how are you this fine day? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You got to see a kind of a, an interesting ghost video earlier in the day. Yes. Yes. We have a listener, Jeremy, who sent us one of the cameras that was, um, what do they call that? Uh, body cam. Okay. Yeah. Body cam that the cop was wearing. One of the cops that responded to that overturned car mm-hmm. in the river in Utah. Mm-hmm. And you can hear, and of course they, you know, Jeremy tipped me off to where they claim to hear the female voice in the audio. Mm -hmm. And you can hear it. You can hear her say, help me, before he says, I'm here, we're getting you, or something along those lines. It's much more ghostly than me accidentally playing a call in the background. Yeah. Or or me uh, coughing or something. (laughs) Is that an EVP? Yeah. No, it, it's yeah. it's really neat. It's really neat. So the, I'll email him and see if we can post that. Would you have caught that immediately, like uh, uh, if, if he had not pointed it out? I think if I had it loud enough, if it was mm-hmm. playing loud enough, I would have. But yeah. no, I mean, because you could tell the officer was responding to something he heard. Yeah. But, you know, had I gone, not heard exactly when to listen for it, I think mm-hmm. I may have missed it. But that's just me. I miss things all the time like yeah. that. It was it was a very interesting video. There was, uh, and, and still nobody has any explanation for it. It has not been debunked yet. You know, it's, it's one of those things. I don't think anybody's going to debunk it. No. Unless somebody comes out from like, oh, I was behind the tree over there. Uh, just shouting for the heck of it, you know. But right. I, I don't think that that's going to be the case. I don't think so either. The uh, phone number here is 855-853-4802 to call in and share your real ghost story with us. We would love to hear it. Of course, you can also write it on the website at realghoststoriesonline.com and share your uh, real ghost story with us that way. So lots of ways to get your real ghost story on the air with us. And of course, remember, if you enjoy the show, consider becoming an EPP. That's what helps keeps us alive and on the air. It's only five bucks a month. You get 31 bonus episodes right off the bat. And then, of course, uh, a brand new bonus episode every single week. Some exclusive video up there for our EPPs as well. It's a way that we say thank you for supporting the show by giving you that extra stuff. And like I said, you get the satisfaction of keeping this show going with our EPPs. Uh, it would not be uh, not be continuing. So, uh, kicking off the show tonight, Gina writes in. My name is Gina. I'm originally from New York, and I now live in Georgia. I was uh, living in Onietta, New York. Did I say that right? Uh, close enough. I don't really know. You don't know. I uh, don't know. <laughs> uh, at uh, the time of the story, I apologize if someone would like to fill in uh, the, the blank on that city name. At the time of the story, it uh, was a college town filled with old, old, large houses. I lived in a large old house that had two other apartments in it. The bottom floor of the house is where the landlord and his wife lived. They were both in their late 80s. The back bedroom of the apartment was always very, very cold, and it had a general feeling of uneasiness in it. One night when I was sleeping, I had a strange dream. 
In the dream, I got up from where I was sleeping, but when I looked down, I could still see myself sleeping. I remember being very scared. I walked out of the room into the kitchen. All the furniture and decorations in the kitchen had been moved around, as well as when I walked into the living room. Pictures were upside down. Chairs were on the coffee table. I remember being scared and confused. I walked back into the bedroom and laid back down in my dream, and then I woke up. I was so scared when I woke up, I didn't even want to go and look into the apartment thinking it would still look like it did in the dream. I decided to get up and everything was fine, but I decided right there something was up with that back room where I slept. So when the sun came out, I moved everything out of that room. Now this may sound silly, but before I shut the door, after everything was out of the room, I said, um, I'm not sure if you are here or not, or if you're angry that I'm in the house. If you want the whole house to yourself, then just do something small and I'll leave. If it's fine uh, that I stay, I'll close this door and never come in this room again, okay? I stayed for the rest of the summer, never had another issue. Of course, I did sleep on the couch in the living room and never went back in the room again. We did have an agreement, and I was just doing my part. I just found the show, and I love listening to you guys. Keep up the good work. I think having to move into a completely different room <laughs> is an issue. I don't think that was a very good bargain to make with the ghost. Well, it let her sleep, yeah. albeit on the couch, but she wasn't having any more dreams like that. But still, I don't know. I'm glad that she didn't stick around too long. If it's a bargainable ghost, I, I, I think she should have just kind of set the rules down a little bit uh, more stern, not, not so passively. Like, well, I'll just go over here. It's okay. No. You got to be, this is, I'm here, you're here, but you're just not going to scare me anymore and I'm not going to rid you of the house and uh, just leave me alone. And a lot of times, if it's bargainable, that seems to work. But I think she just kind of gave the, the ghost too much leeway. Yeah, I don't know that I would offer it up here, have my bedroom first, first thing, but... Maybe a closet? You know, I mean... It had been the spirit's room for so long, she obviously felt uncomfortable in there anyway. Sure. Now, so, whether or not she ever would have felt comfortable in there, it might have not been that big of a loss for her. That's what I was going to say. is like, would she have ever gotten to the point of feeling comfortable, even if it did leave her alone, per se, you know? Right. So, I don't know. Very interesting story. Thanks for uh, thanks for writing in and sharing that with us. Numbers 855-853-4802 to share your real ghost story with us. Let's go to Juan in Texas. Hi. Hello, Tony. This is Juan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Love the show. Um, so basically, my story starts back in 2002. Uh, I lived in a condo and... Uh, my wife at the time, she was washing dishes and I was upstairs and I was going to go downstairs and I saw a shadow on the wall on the stairs going up. So I was thinking it was her. So what I was going to do is I was going to try to prank her and I hid behind the door and just waited for her to come upstairs, but she never, she never came up. And so I'm go downstairs and I'll talk to her to see where you know she's she's okay and she says yeah she's just been sitting there washing dishes I'm like huh later on that night um I remember it like it was yesterday it was 905 and we were getting going to sleep you know going to bed and we were not even laying down five minutes and I felt like a static electricity is what I can picture, you know, just think about it. It's like it, it ran up my leg towards my knee. So naturally I freaked out, kicking the sheet and, you know, really scared to see what's going on. And um, so I looked around the room, I didn't see anything. So we went back to bed and shrugged it off. 10 minutes later, it happened again. It came from my toes all the way up towards my hip area. And again, I kicked the sheets. I started cussing. And when I started kicking the sheets, my son downstairs, he was asleep downstairs. I forgot to tell you that. 
he was asleep downstairs in his bedroom and he started crying. And my girlfriend started crying. So I've never really felt nothing like that before. Some kind of felt like a static charge going straight up my leg. I don't know what that is. Um, other than that, that's really what happened to me. I went to, I grabbed, when that happened, I grabbed my Bible and I started saying a few verses and with a firm voice, I was scared, but I try to give with a firm voice, you know, this is my home. This, I belong here, not you. But there, it, it was something weird that day that really happened to me. And me being the guy I am, I just, I just try to be, look confident in front of my girlfriend at the time. Um, that's a few other things that led up to this story and stuff still happens every now and then to me. I'm a little nervous, so first time caller. But yeah, I would I would like to call back and share some more stories. But really that's that's really what happened to me. All right, thank you. Thanks for calling in Juan and uh, sharing your story. Is it so much the tone of the voice, a firm voice to rid a demon, or is it more of the content of what's being said? that will rid the demon. Does a demon give a, a hoot about uh, how you're, if you're saying it with, you know, inflection? Or is it more so about if you, um, I, I, here's what I take. Now that I'm just gonna answer my own question, but okay. I, I wanna hear your opinion. Though. Okay, go ahead. My thought would be firmness usually comes across when you do believe what you're saying, when you're convicted on what you're saying. You're saying the intent is translated through yeah, the tone. Exactly. Yeah. If you're kind of iffy on what you're saying, uh, uh, it'll come across that way. Right. Although, I mean, there are times when you're just nervous and you can be very convicted on something and just be kind of, that's how I was all through childhood. I could not get something firmly said or like convictedly said out loud to make anyone believe it. Everybody thought I was lying about so many things that I really wasn't. It drove me nuts. Really? <laughs> because it just sounded like I was lying. Uh -huh. But I just, I was so nervous about talking to people. So it would come across as if, ah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. But th that's my question. Is it the content or is it the, the tone? <clears throat> I think it's both. I think you have to say what you mean and say it mean. Say what you mean and say it mean. Mm -hmm. That could be a t-shirt. That's what I think you have to do. I mean, you have to say it with the intent of what you're trying to get across. Sure. Is that from something or just come up with that? I. It's a take on a saying that I've heard say what you mean but don't say it mean but with a demon you need to say what you mean <laughs> but say it mean that's true that's where it's coming from i got you it's not an original thought i just twisted it around it could be a t-shirt <laughs> rid the demons say what you mean and say it mean <laughs> i'm going to respond to that when people ask how to get rid of something now okay uh, that's gonna be my new <laughs> it's a little bit better than demon away i think slightly but it, when you use it in conjunction with demon away makes it 10 times more powerful then it's spray what you mean and s spray it mean oh that that's the option yeah, we, yeah demon away is a spray isn't it mm -hmm. i was thinking now new and new powdered demon away you can kind of like the crap you put on carpet before you nobody does that anymore i hated that that stuff. stuff's been gone for 25 oh, years oh my god we had a no they still use it like an in, like a lot of industrial cleaning well and when kids puke on carpet they stick it on there I, and then they can vacuum it up almost every workplace i've ever worked in they do it Ugh. and it's it makes me want to throw up yeah just smelling it and it's like oh god why did they do it? i don't know it's horrible horrible audible hey it's the internet's leading provider of spoken audio entertainment providing digital versions of tens of thousands of audiobooks for download on your computer smartphone and mp3 player i use it all the time what have you been listening to lately um deliver us from evil is one i've actually revisited uh -huh. I, I i read it over the summer saw the movie and then I went back and I'm like, I want to do the book again because it, and books, you, you get so much more, you know, you, two hours on a movie did not really justify how good that book really was. So sure. if you saw the movie, go back, do the audiobook. 
it, okay. it's so so much better demonic possession exorcism haunted houses satanic rituals all the stuff we talk about on this show and it's all you know it's it, it's a true story um and it's really kind of shocking and disturbing and you know it really makes you you know realize you know just it, there's loads of crap that that our law enforcement has to deal with some of it is this Sure. And a lot of times it gets overlooked. It's uh, the story from a 16-year NYPD veteran uh, and, and the stuff that he goes through delivers me. It's a great book. There's also some other ones on there. Uh, the one that I'm kind of uh, getting into right now, uh, Gothic Ghost by Hans Holzer. He was on Arts Bell shows way, way, way back. Sure. And he's he's since gone. But uh, he has just recently put his, his audio books out on there. Okay. And he's got all sorts of ones. Right now I'm uh, on uh, the Gothic Ghost, and it's it's not necessarily Gothic Gothic. It's 19 true stories, haunted houses, eyewitness encounters uh, from all over the United States. Uh, really interesting, really classic stuff. So anyway, obviously you're into ghosts. Check out uh, audiblepodcast.com slash real ghost. Over 150,000 titles to choose from every genre out there as well. Plus, you get a free audiobook download when you sign up uh, and uh, refer uh, us by going to audiblepodcast.com forward slash real ghost. Audiblepodcast.com forward slash real ghost and get your free audiobook download. Our number here is 855-853-4802. Let's go to Dallas. Hi. Hi, my name is Dallas. Um, okay. This is kind of weird or whatever, but um, this is something that happened a couple of years back. Okay. Um, before this time, I, I, I wasn't a big believer in any spiritual entities or anything like that. But... Um, Whenever I lived in my old house, I was told that there was a guy that died and uh, also two of his uh, ex-wives. So he was a widow twice and then he ended up dying in the same house. Uh, we ended up making, like remaking the house completely and uh, we ended up getting this mirror. Um, one thing about this mirror though is that one day I actually took a picture and there was a lady that was looking straight down at my family the creepiest of ways we thought it was just a reflection off of the TV because it resembled the same woman kind of but she had completely different clothes and she wasn't doing the same thing that that the mirror did at all um so that was the first part of it. Then later on, after we kind of forgot all about that, and we thought it was just weird, whatever, um, my sister ended up getting up in the middle of the night, which me and her have, well, had uh, our, our bedrooms really close to each other, right next to each other, and then we had a bathroom right outside. Uh, every night she complained that uh, there was some girl poking her and she was way too little to make this up she was at the age of probably three or four possibly five no actually four or five my god um, and she couldn't be making this up it wasn't just a spring it wasn't anything like that she was quite convinced that it was a little girl poking her um, she ended up getting up out of bed one night, though, and I thought nothing of it. I was just playing on my Xbox, like I did every night, uh, late last, not late last night, uh, late that night, my bad. No. Um, and I saw her go to the bathroom. I was like, okay, okay. Uh, then all of a sudden the door opens, and she walks out of the bathroom and goes into her room. I thought nothing of it. Then I see it happen again. Going from the bathroom back to her room for the second time. So I get creeped out at first. And I, I thought this was it's just a deja vu. But then I realize nothing else is occurring that is doing the exact same thing. Not that everything else is completely different. So then I am a little creeped out and then I go into my sister's room and ask her 
Um, he says, uh, did, did you just get up? And she said, yes. Uh, I went to the bathroom. And I said, okay. How many times did you go to the bathroom? Once. How many times, how many times did you come back? Obviously, she said once. So I was really creeped out. I didn't tell her anything about it. And I was like, okay, okay, that's all I wanted to know. And then I calmly walked out and kept playing on the game or whatever. And then I ended up passing out and my Xbox turned itself off. So everything was off after I passed out. And um, the creepiest thing of all is that the fact that in the middle of the night, I was woken up by the same girl that looked exactly like my sister. She was staring at me straight down and she was just watching me over and over and over for hours and hours and hours just sitting there. It creeped me out. I was honestly scared to the point where I couldn't, I, I wouldn't do anything. I, I, I just sat there terrified. Um, finally, she just vanished. Um, but before she vanished, she mentioned that her name was Samantha. And this is the weird part. I didn't have any clue on this. But my mom, um, uh, I ended up telling her about this. And the uh, thing is, when she was little, uh, she actually knew somebody that was haunting her also, whose name was Samantha. So it creeped her out. And that's my story. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Same ghost? I don't know. I think it's pretty ironic. So, probably. Um, or doppelganger of the sister. You know, it's funny how she, the, she being the ghost, can look exactly like the sister. But yet, he knew it wasn't her. You know, you could just mm-hmm. tell. There was just this feeling around the ghost that he knew it was not his sister. I wonder if it's one of those things where it's someone a little bit further back in the family line where he said that it was the mother that had a foot ghost, right? Yeah. I wonder if it was something where it is like a a, a grandmother or an aunt or something like that. Further back, similar in characteristic, so it may look like the sister a little bit, especially in the dark. Sure. And and maybe that, that is the same ghost that's yeah. kind of watching them. It would be interesting to know, I mean, if I were him, I would go back and and see if I could find out if there was a Samantha somewhere in your family tree. Sure. Because if there is, if it is the same girl, and there's no way to know, because I'm sure the mom can't see any, you know, Mm -hmm. can't see the little girl or or whatever anymore. So it would be really interesting to know, because there's a reason that that ghost is with that family. Well, also, how how did they get the name Samantha? How did they know the name? How, how was it told to them? Did somebody just make it up? Going, oh, I'm going to call this one Samantha. No, I think somehow it was conveyed to them. Was it conveyed? Okay. Uh huh. All right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Interesting story. Thanks for calling in and uh, sharing that with us. The number here is eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two. Stephen in uh, Belgrade writes in, well, I literally just had my first sleep paralysis experience. Lying in bed for about 30 minutes, was drifting off to sleep, noticed a weight on my body. I felt as though someone was lying on top of me, but there was significantly more pressure on my right arm, which is resting on the pillow above my head, as well as on my right leg. As I became aware of this pressure, I also felt my bed begin to shake and heard the sounds of some unknown being rustling about above my head. The sound seemed to be coming from the room just out of reach of my outstretched right arm. My elbow was propped against the wall beside my bed, and my hand was resting against the wall on the head of my bed. My bed is located in the corner of the room, 
I open my eyes, half expecting my cat to be resting on my right leg, but knowing from listening to the numerous accounts of sleep paralysis on the show, I'd most likely see something much more frightening. Thank God there was nothing there when I opened my eyes. I could see that neither the room nor my bed were shaking, although I continued to feel myself shake. The rustling sound got louder and louder, and soon whooping sounds began to accompany it. Many voices whooping over and over, but these voices I recognized. They were the voices of co-workers whooping back and forth to each other like we used to do on late nights in the factory where I work. And one of the whoops that I was hearing was my own. I hadn't made the whooping noise, but hearing the voices of my co-workers helped to calm me, releasing me from the initial terror of my first such experience. And as I focused on the whooping sounds, I felt the pressure lift from my body. The rustling above my head slowly died down and I was able to move again. So I immediately picked up my phone, went to the website and started typing up my experience to share. I realized that this case of sleep paralysis likely had nothing to do with the paranormal, but I wanted to share it because it's a topic that comes up quite frequently. I enjoy hearing about other haunted movie theaters as well as the plethora of other stories. Next to my plan to share my last handful of stories that I have experienced so far in my life. These include hereditary, a hereditary form of deja vu and two distinct disembodied voices that have followed me for most of my life. Though I'm not the only one who hears them. Stephen in Belgrade. Well, thank you for... As soon as you broke free of the sleep paralysis for writing in to us to tell us about it. First thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. No, I want to hear all your other stories about the disembodied voices and everything, too. That'd be a good title for the show. Disembodied voices? For one of the episodes. I don't think I've ever used that one yet. Yeah. I'm going to use that when we have that story. We better write it down or we won't remember. Uh, what was that? Uh, Belgrade? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Disembodied voices. All right. Remind me. Uh, so do, yeah, please, uh, please do write it. When I have sleep paralysis experiences, I tap Jenny. I'm like, I just, I just had a sleep paralysis. She goes, ah, ah. You have only had one and it was long before we ever met. <laughs> Happens every night. Does not. Every night. And you're just like, ah. Thank you so I'm much kidding. for that. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I won't talk about the sounds you make in your sleep. Like what? You sound like you say you have that exploding head syndrome. It uh -huh. sounds like a chainsaw is in the bedroom. <laughs> is that what it is? That's what you sound like. It's really just me making the noise That's all along? That's all it is. Oh, I thought my head was exploding. No. It was fun. We were watching The Walking Dead the other night. Yeah. You, you woke up right at the right time, which I don't... Did did a, a noise startle you? I don't know. I don't know how it happened. But you like you did. You woke up like right at the very end of the season finale. It was like the last three minutes. Uh -huh. And it was like right at the pivotal. And so you, you sat up. It was almost like you had a nightmare. I don't know if there's a noise or something on the show. But it was kind of... It, it wasn't a point where I'd want to like just wake up at. Uh -huh. You know, I know you had no choice as to far as what you're waking up, but you like literally opened your eyes like right as the guy was getting his nut, his throat slit. Yeah, well, it's all good. I'm used to that kind of stuff. I mean, we watched Walking Dead <laughs> sure. for a ridiculous amount. Yeah, yeah. It was just like prime for like, oh my God, <laughs> like what's going on on the television? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it happened then. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, 855-853-4802 is the phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost story with us. Of course, you can also uh, write into the website, realghoststoriesonline.com. Anonymous writes in, hello, guys. So I have a quick one for you. I'm a nighttime custodian at a high school in California. And while I've had a handful of creepy experiences here over the years, there's one that stands out above the rest. It was around 11 p.m. and I was about to take the last of my trash out to the compactor, which is where we dispose of all waste. Anyway, I get to the compactor and I must wheel my garbage down a long hall and through an art room. I entered the dark art room and took about five steps in when I saw three basketball size and shape balls or orbs, I hate that word, floating about 15 feet off the ground. They were a very bright whitish purplish color. The balls were interweaving with each other uh, very quickly and in what seemed to be a pattern. After what seemed like an eternity, but was probably only five to six seconds in duration, and then just they just vanished. 
They just disappeared in the blink of an eye. I stood there for a second, just backed up and said to myself, Self, you can just empty that garbage tomorrow. That was the only time I've ever actually seen anything like that so clear, not out of the corner of my eye or at a fleeting glimpse. It was there, and I friggin' saw it. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Oh yeah, there was no sound at all. P.S. You guys were talking about a haunted Toys R Us in an episode I recently listened to. It is in the Bay Area. Grew up here and heard about it growing up, but never visited. Anyway, love the show. Keep up the great work. Peace out, G's. Peace out, G's. G-Unit? What? G-Unit. Oh. Yep. Okay. You didn't work in Top 40 Radio. It's okay. No. You didn't miss much. Okay. I... I lost my thought. Go. No. No, I lost my thought. Go. <laughs> Keep up the great work. You were talking about the Haunted Toys R Us for a moment. They were talking about uh, the orb. What do, what do we think of the oh. orbs? Well, it sounds like they were happy orbs. You know, mm-hmm. happy spirits. I don't know why they would be playing around and kind of in a pattern if they... You know, to me, that just sounds like a happy, positive type mm-hmm. activity. You know, and not something ominous. When I hear like the orb stories like that, um, <laughs> my mind almost kind of goes Disney esque, you know, like fairy dust, sure, you know, or like Tinkerbell type things, like flying around. And I, I don't ever like really get a a negative vibe out of it with with orbs for the most part. Orbs to me feel like they're, I don't know. My interpretation is, is like the embodiment of a a person's energy, a human. Yeah, I, I a lot of times the orb stories, I don't know, they're not very often connected with like a demon esque thing. It's like the demon esque things. If they're going to show, they're going to do something. They're going to come up as something, not a flashing ball of light. That my in my opinion. Sure, but I can understand it being really startling when you go in an empty classroom at night and sure. there's three orbs oh. dancing around. That would definitely rattle me. Whether it was happy orbs or not yeah it's it yeah i i I, (laughs) know i had a boss um at my last radio station who uh had an experience like that um with he looked up at night in his bedroom and he similar to kind of the experience you shared um of just this glowing ball and he's like what is this and he's a very, he's kind of, matter of fact, not a freak out. He's a calm guy. And he tapped his wife and said, uh, honey, uh, there's a glowing ball above the bed or something to that effect. And she was kind of out of it and just said, yeah, that's, that's just my spirit guide. <laughs> never, never wanted to look up. Did, did, I wasn't afraid. Just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Go back to bed. I'm sleeping. I like that. Yeah. That's a good one. So very, uh. Interesting. Did that comfort him at all when she said that? I don't know that it comforted him, but uh, I, I probably, you know, calmed him down a little bit. But I think he was still kind of like, what is going on here? Did he know that she had a spirit guide? I think he did then. I don't know if he did before then. That would be one heck of a thing to break in the middle of the yeah. night. Just roll over. <laughs> yeah, it's my spirit guide. Good but night. It, it happens... Uh, it, it happened more than once, I believe, it, where these things have shown up. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's good that it it was something she could identify and it was not threatening. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and the fact that she, and she was so sure uh-huh. of what it was without even looking at it. But very interesting. It makes me wonder if it's got something that she sees like on a regular basis and every once in a while is just essentially bright enough, if you will, for others to see, too. Yeah. You know, or, or have enough energies, I think, would probably to project itself out to others who don't necessarily always see those things. Sure. You know? Yeah. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Cody writes in, hello, I have many stories. I'm not sure where to even start. I've had experiences ever since I was young. I think it may have something to do with the fact that when I was born, I almost died because I had an umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. I'm not honestly sure why, though, just a theory, or it may have something to do with my strange childhood. As a child, I saw things like witchcraft, along with many other things, but that's a story for another day. But here is just one night that still stands out to me. 
I remember it very clearly. I was in the second grade when I had this experience. The apartment we were living in at the time was not haunted. However, I did have this single incident. I had gone to bed just like any other night. I was trying to fall asleep. However, I just couldn't manage to. I'm not sure what time it was, but two things or experiences happened to me that night that were terrifying. I was just lying there and looking around my room, trying to sleep. When out of nowhere, I saw this black hooded figure standing in the corner of my room. I was petrified. It had its back towards me at first. I remember it had an all black robe on with a hood, not a shadow person. I know this because it was completely solid. I couldn't cry for help or move. I was frozen. I had no doubt whatever it was, it was pure evil, and I had the worst feeling come over me. As I lie there, it slowly turned till I could see its face, and it was also floating off the ground. As I looked, I could tell this was not a ghost or anything human in nature. Its face was green and deformed. It never got closer, and it never spoke. It just stood there, as if it just wanted me to know it was there. I quickly went under my covers and started praying over and over again. I'm not sure how long I prayed. It must have been a while. All I knew is that I felt God would protect me and I had been, uh, as I had been taught. I finally worked up the courage to look to see if whatever it was was still standing there, but it had vanished. I never saw whatever it was again. As you can imagine, it was hard to sleep after that. Then at some time later, after that, uh, again that night, I saw another strange thing. Not as scary, but still very odd. Out of nowhere, two things started forming. It was more of a white light at first, and then formed into two figures. Only here were no features at all. Just two figures made of all light. It looked like a male and female. They started dancing in my room. It almost seemed as though they were happy about something. I could see that they were both holding something together while dancing. From what I could tell, it looked like a baby, if I had to guess. This went on for a few more minutes, and again, I hid under the covers again and prayed for a while. Again, after a while, I looked back up and everything was gone. I was too scared to get out of my bed until morning. The next day, scared to death. I told my mom all the things I saw that night. She seemed very alarmed about the black hooded figure, and we prayed and she did a small blessing in my room, and it never happened again after that. She said what was strange about the white figures dancing in my room with the baby was that that same night she had a dream about two people she knew holding, playing with a baby. I have no idea what to make of this, but that night was something that has always stuck with me. To this day, I still get shivers when I talk about it, and I tear up. You know, I don't know why this would be the case, but to me, it almost kind of sounds like a... Almost, you know, illustrative of the experience of almost dying at birth. Like, death was there, and then death went away, and then you had these two spirits that were happy playing with the baby. Oh, I see. Like, uh almost ready there to come and get yeah, the baby. But then it went away, and the baby was okay, and the two mm -hmm. parents were happy. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't know why, but that's what I drew from it. Okay. I I, I, I honestly, I don't I don't know where to, to go and, and really what to draw from it. Um, yours makes more sense than anything I'm going to conjure up here. <laughs> well, that honestly. doesn't say a whole lot. No, yes, it does. Yours usually makes a lot more sense than mine, but I, I, that's a very interesting analogy or, or what would the right word be? It's not an conclusion. analogy. Conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. To, to what happened early on and what they were thinking may be the cause of some of that. Yeah. But I don't know why that would be kind of almost replaying itself. Sure. I don't know. Almost like they didn't get what they wanted. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And then they're just going to follow until the end. Yeah. That's interesting. 855-853-4802. That's our number here at Real Ghost Stories. 
online. If you want more ghost stories, please uh, support the show. Become an EPP. It's only five bucks a month, or you can sign up for a full year at a time. And uh, you get a brand new bonus episode every single week and access to our past archive of EPP episodes right now. 31 of them sitting there waiting for you to enjoy. Sign up at realghoststoriesonline.com. Connie writes, say, when I was 16 years old, my 24-year-old sister, Angel, passed away. She'd been sick with lupus since she was 16 years old. She and I were extremely close. She wasn't just my sister, but also my best friend. So it hurt extremely hard on me. I was devastated. When my sister was alive, she and I used to talk about my dad, who died when I was nine years old from prostate cancer. My dad and sister were very close. My sister used to tell me how she would see my dad sitting on the edge of her hospital bed, telling her that everything was going to be okay during her many stays at the hospital. I remember telling her that my dad would never show himself to me because I would be terrified. A couple of weeks after my sister died, I was sitting on my mom's bed talking to my mom. We were talking about my sister and how much we missed her and sharing funny stories about her. I remember telling my mom that Angel would never show herself to me because I would be terrified. Just as I said that, something caught the corner of my eye in my mom's doorway. I quickly turned to see what it was, and it was a bluish purple gold light, and it disappeared in a matter of seconds. But it went from head to toe, so it resembled a human figure. I just sat there staring in that direction until my mom asked what was wrong. I asked her if she saw that, and she didn't know what I was talking about. I told her what I saw, and she said it was probably my sister. It's funny because my mom was facing the door, and yet she didn't see a thing. After my sister died, my mom, stepdad, and I experienced a lot of things that we couldn't explain. Some were harmless, but others weren't. But I'll write in another time about those experiences, and some of them are pretty scary. So much so that I wouldn't be able to step foot in that house again. Though I often wonder if the current tenants experience anything. A few months of my exper a few months after my experiences of seeing that light in my mom's bedroom doorway, I'd taken some pictures of different things. When I had the film developed, I was shocked when I saw one picture. It was of my parents sitting outside with their dog Pepper, but above Pepper's head was a bluish purple color that looked exactly like what I saw in my mom's bedroom doorway, and it looked like arms holding Pepper's ears up. No other picture on that film had that. I showed my parents and told them that it looked like what I saw in their bedroom doorway. My stepdad told me that it looked exactly like what he saw too when he saw my sister. Apparently he had seen my sister sitting in a chair with this bluish purple and gold light around her. And then my stepdad started crying. I know that what I saw in the doorway was not my imagination. I truly believe that it was my sister making herself known. I never got to say goodbye to my sister, so maybe she was coming back to say goodbye. I still have the picture and occasionally look at it. I truly believe that it's my sister in the picture. I've never had another picture that had that same color in it. I hope you enjoy my experience. I'll write in again with another unexplainable event that I've experienced. I love listening to your podcasts. Keep up the great work. Well, since the father, the stepdad saw her and knew that that light was surrounding her, you can probably lay money that that was the sister still coming back to you know be part of the family mm -hmm. but it's never too late to tell them goodbye so if you you know feel like you never got to tell them goodbye and you know that her spirit is still around just say it just say it to her yeah because not always uh, will the I, I would say the energy be projecting itself for you to see it sure and know conclusively that it is right there because they don't seem to have enough energy to do that. But very likely, if it's an occurrence where she's showing up, she's showing up, she's showing up, she's probably there quite often. You just can't always see it or sense it. Well, and it's just as important. Well, it's probably more important for you to say it for you than for mm -hmm. you to say it for her. Yeah, and to get the closure on your end mm -hmm. and knowing that she's hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for writing in. We'd love to hear those other stories. The number here, 855-853-4802. Hi. Hi, uh, Tony and Jenny. Um, this is Bees. I'm calling from the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Um, I'm a little nervous. Uh, so I wrote this all out, and I'll just read it, um, and hopefully 
don't forget anything. Um, first of all, I've been listening to you, Tony. I've been listening to your ghost stuff um, before you even had a show and was super excited when you started producing one. And I love that it's strictly ghosts. Um, I'm not a huge fan of aliens or Bigfoot or any kind of those crypto beasties. So thank you very much for keeping it ghosts only. So I've been a ghost nerd since the days of sightings and unsolved mysteries, and I started getting really serious about ghost investigating a good 20 years ago, and even took a class on the paranormal given by the renowned parapsychologist Lloyd Auerbach back in the day. Um, I've, toured, I've toured loads of haunted locations, and um, they were, many were featured on TV. I've been to the Union Hotel in Benicia, the St. Kevin's Graveyard in Ireland, the Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco, the Greyfriars Churchyard, that's where the Mackenzie poltergeist is. Um, went there with my best friend Elizabeth in Scotland, and we wanted so badly to be scratched. Um, and of course, nothing happened. Um, we went to the underground vault in Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Scotland, and as an aside, the only activity my best friend and I caught there in the vault was a drunk Russian tourist who blacked out from too much booze. So there was that. I've been to the Archbishop's Mansion in San Francisco and the USS Hornet in Alameda, the Moss Beach Distillery, and the Brookdale Lodge in Santa, in Santa Cruz. And of all these places I visited, I have had not one single experience. I'm basically convinced that I am ghost repellent. Um, I think like I must just, I think the ghosts see me coming and they're like, run and hide. Um, I am kind of a skeptic at heart, but I really, really want to believe. So anyway, to my story. I have a nephew um, and his name's Skye. And I couldn't wait until he was old enough um, to go ghost hunting with me. I'd always wanted to go ghost hunting, but had never been. And as soon as he turned 13, I told him it was time. So this past October, um, right around Halloween, I booked us on a group investigation with a bunch of ghost hunters to investigate um, Mare Island Naval Base, which is in Vallejo, California. It's an old naval, uh, naval shipyard that was closed in the early 90s and is now kept up by a preservation society. It was the first naval base established on the Pacific Ocean, a little bit of history there. Um, it was established sometime around 1861 and, as you can imagine, has an enormous military cemetery with over 900 buried. Our group was given nighttime access. It was so dark that we had to use high-powered flashlights because most of the island was not lit. So uh, a bit of the haunting lore um, on Mare Island. There's a white lady, yes. Every cemetery has one. Um, she has been seen around the grave of Anna Arnold Key Turner, who was the daughter of the dude who wrote The Star Spangled Banner. Um, EVPs have been caught, um, some apparitions have been seen, and some disembodied voices have also been heard. So there we were, my nephew and I, ghost hunting away, having a blast. I was looking totally ratchet with all these ghost like equipment things hanging off me. Um, I luckily left my headlamp at home because I didn't want to horrify my nephew, but I brought along a super strong flashlight instead and had a camera and um, was just super stoked. Um, my nephew forgot his cam uh, forgot his flashlight, so I let him hold mine. Anyway, cut to the cemetery. It was an inky black night, and although the moon was bright, enormous eucalyptus trees shade out most of the moonlight. The entire cemetery is on an incline, so you have to walk up it and through it, kind of through the center in order to reach this, the very top of the cemetery. So there's rows and rows of headstones, and they're sort of arranged military style lining either side of this path. So I decided to wander off by myself in the dark trying to catch EVPs on my own. And I was just kind of uh, doing what I saw on TV and feeling really ridiculous, but nonetheless doing it. And so I was sort of asking in the dark, is there anybody there? Does anybody want to talk to me? And um, kind of giggling to myself because I felt like a tool. 
Eventually, I wrapped it up and headed back down the steep incline to find my nephew, who was still holding my flashlight. Once I spotted him, I started jogging in the dark, downhill, blindly towards him. I think I was laughing, saying something like, oh, there you are, ha, 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 when I hit a headstone at about the height of my knees and flew headfirst. The momentum of running downhill and then nailing a headstone sent me flying about three feet. Thankfully, my cat-like reflexes kicked in and my hands shot forward and broke my fall. It was so humiliated. I tried to get up hella fast, but my nephew was already flashing like 500 lumens of bright light down upon me. I told him, turn off the flashlight, and hastily asked him if anyone had seen me eat shit. He said no, and then we both started cackling. I was so embarrassed. Some ghost hunter I was. So I quickly got up and turned around to see whose headstone I had just tumbled over. I grabbed my flashlight from my nephew and looked at the headstone, which revealed that he was a Marine. Hoorah! And that was about all I could make out. I sheepishly apologized to the Marine, told him I meant no disrespect, and that I hoped that my clumsiness hadn't interrupted his big, deep sleep. I also said thank you for your service and rest in peace. I turned off my flashlight and I snapped a quick picture with my digital camera. Um, it popped a flash and then that was it. And then I sort of, you know, flipped through my camera to look at my playback screen and I stopped, stunned. What I had captured was an unusual black mist right beside the headstone. Just like, hi, I'm here. Can you see me? I showed my nephew and we immediately started to try and debunk it. We searched the ground for uh, similar shapes. We snapped more pictures. We just couldn't explain what it was. Anyway, I ran up, showed the rest of the group um, that we were ghost hunting with, and they were all really excited and freaking out. And um, I think the head of the ghost hunting group actually even brought down one of those uh, little devices that lights up from green to red. I can't remember what those are called, but um, she put it on top of the headstone and to see if there was any sort of energy there. And I think it blinked one or two lights, but really not much more. Um, we couldn't capture any more mists, nothing. So it was just sort of there and then gone. Anyway, I'll attach the picture. I'll go ahead and email it in since I'm calling. I'll email it over to you and I'll put, you know, in the header that this is the, the Mare Island um, image. I'm still not convinced it's a ghost. I'm still totally skeptic, but um, I'll just share it with you guys and um, you can check it out. Um, other than that, I pretty much once I got my evidence, I kind of packed my shit up and grabbed my nephew and we hightailed it off the island. It was really a lot of fun and hopefully I can hornswoggle my nephew into doing it again <laughs> sometime soon. Anyway, that's my story. Um, I'm an EPP. I freaking love you guys. You're awesome. You're the best. And um, take care. Bye. Thanks for the story. Thanks for being an EPP. That's crazy that you took the picture and there was a black mist right there where you had been talking to it. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I think he got a ghost. I think so, too. I don't think he caused you to fall, but I think he was kind of there, you know, uh -huh. watching it all go down, I guess. <laughs> Getting a little chuckle in his uh, ghostly way. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got one. Um, it, it's interesting. I mean, it's funny how she kind of listed off, did this, went there, and all these trying to seek out sure. really wanting to get the guys that's how it always works though i mean it's like the people who don't want to have to run into ghosts run into ghosts and the people who actively seek them out have the most difficult time trying to find them which to me doesn't make a lot of sense especially if if some of these ghosts want to be known want to be seen you'd think they'd be like seeking out all the ghost groups that exist now and be saving up their energy for the day that the ghost investigators come and not just showing themselves to bernie when he's in the men's stall reading newsweek you know sure it's yeah. like why are they you know uh, unless unless there's a disconnect there and they're not quite i, I don't know i mean not grasping what these people are doing i have no idea why they choose to not appear to certain people yeah i mean i think they appear to some people because of you know we've talked about it before they see their light essentially they have a little bit brighter beacon mm -hmm. but there's plenty of people that aren't sensitive that 
see ghosts. So I don't know why they choose who they do and don't show to. Now is prime time more than ever in, in our history for ghosts to come out and really prove that they're there. Yeah. If you will, with all of the ghost groups, all of the equipment, all of the people trying to get them. And really, you know, with like some of the boxes and things that exist now, as far as pulling, it is getting pretty creepy. Yeah. If you will, as far as what's coming across, I'm just waiting for the day where there's just like the complete, you know, conclusive evidence. There's a ghost. Take a look at this. I mean, we've seen it here and there, but there's always something that someone can go and kind of debunk it with. Well, sure. You know, or, or at least put a question mark in your mind. Um, I'm waiting for the one where there can be no question mark. <laughs> it's just clear as day, HD video. You know, there's like 20 cameras that are getting it, and it's all like something right there, and it's all showing up to all of them. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to ever have that. I don't know. I think because it's something that does mm -hmm. strike fear, it's almost going to kind of be a off-limits thing. Like, we're never going to actually be able to prove it, no matter how scientific we get, because there's a group yeah. that they don't want to know. They don't want to have that be real. Well, here, here's like my, like a prime example of, of how I think you could really uh, kind of conclusively have some really good evidence. Look at a concert. Or, or, or even an amusement park, like a, like a Disney World or something. Uh -huh. You have a lot of people who have their camera phones out and they're doing video all at the exact same time. A concert's more of a prime example and it doesn't have to be there, but it's just, you know, there's, they're all focused on one center point. Yeah. For then something paranormal to happen with all those different cameras, different angles, all capturing it. The same thing. Sure. Unquestionable. It's not just this one camera, an abnormality of light over here or there. And I want it you know, super clear. You know, I, it would be interesting. I don't know. I wonder if something like something like that will ever happen where just because there's more video capturing going on today than ever before. Well, sure. But like if it were to happen at a concert, you know, we know there's the technology now well, yeah. to actually have a hologram of Michael Jackson performing his latest sure. song and he's been dead how many years now? That was really a ghost. That would not, so, But I mean, and, and the concerts, I mean, I'm just, I'm using it as an example of You just mean focus having of, all the different camera yeah. angles from, you know, a huge number of witnesses. It can be somebody, you know, you know, videotaping someone eating 500 sandwiches at an Arby's and there's 20 people around and they're getting their the camera shots of it. Yeah. I don't care where it is. It's just with that many people out there with cameras focused on one thing at one event somewhere because it happens. Mm -hmm. And then that all those cameras capturing something kind of like I mean, there was a, there's a lot of different videos of that car thing the other day. Yeah. Um, again, it's just it's so hard to conclusively say be, without somebody saying well, I mean, it could have been somebody that was over there yelling and this or that, and they just drove away. You know, it's something that can be passed off. I want, like, sure. hard, hard, you can't argue with it evidence. Well, we've been searching for that for how long? I know. I just wonder if it'll happen. It's because of all the cameras out there. Probably, like, the day after we die, there'll be somebody <laughs> that has that. Guess what? And then it will be scientific fact. There you go. And then we'll be remembered for all of the shows. Yeah. There you go. Ah, uh, yes. 855-853-4802. That's our number to call in and share your real ghost story with us. Of course, you can also write it on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com. And like I've been saying, if you like the show, maybe you're new to it, uh, please uh, support it. Uh, just go to uh, realghoststoriesonline.com. Click Become an EPP. Get all those bonus episodes sent to you. And you get the satisfaction of knowing that your donation to the show keeps it on the air. Those costs keep going up the more people listen, which is a great thing. The more people listening, but uh, we do need the support to keep it going. So consider doing that on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.